everybody, it's time to LOL. Listen out loud, that is. It's time for Anime Jam Session with DJ Ronma S, Mako-chan, and Ari Rockefeller. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Anime Jam Session, episode number 487. We are that podcast that talks about anime, games, conventions, the fandom, geek stuff, and everything in between. I'm DJ Ronma S. I'm Ari Rockefeller. Can't hear you. Can't. I'm Ari Rockefeller. No, Ari, we heard you. <laughs> Sorry, and I'm Ichigogami. For some reason, I think I pressed a button on my mixer. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, trust me, I understand. I was having uh, pr- show prep issues early, causing me to reboot. And um, Mako-chan is out tonight. She's not feeling too well, but she will be back to torture us next week. Uh, outside of that, how is everybody doing tonight? Uh. I, I, I kind of feel your pain because it used to be so easy for me to share and promote that we're going live on Facebook. All I had to do was change it to my profile and just go into and just pick a group every time and just share with the description. And that's it. That's all I had to do. Now I have to go in, hit share, then select my profile, then go to the, then select the group, share it. And refresh the page because it removes the option to share again. I'm just like, are you fucking serious now? Yeah, with Facebook linked up to Instagram and everything like that, it's been making it a mess for me to post on social media in general, even though I hardly post. I was like, I think I accidentally posted to my, like, my food page, my foodie page where I post, like, pictures of, like, snacks. And, like, traveling, when we travel, I post pictures of, like, our meals and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I accidentally posted, like, a sewing picture. And I was like, oh, well, I mean, at least it was, like, (laughs) honey-themed. So it's, like, vaguely foodie. But Facebook has made it so much harder to just even manage posting on social media if it wasn't hard in the first place. I mean, it used to be so simple. I mean, can I have my old profile... Not my old, the old layout back, please. Can I have that back, please? You know, I I kind of want that. I kind I actually miss that. You know, I mean, yeah. I'm also on Instagram, and I just kept like I don't want to merge my Instagram inbox with my Facebook page inbox. Now I'm basically at the point where it's merged. Deal with it. Granted, it's easier for me to have one inbox for both because I'll re- respond from my desktop. But at the same time, I'm like, I, no, I, I, I'd rather not. Yeah, Facebook makes it really hard for it to be reliable too. There's frequent times where I'll get somebody who's interested in con- like contacting me for a commission or sewing or anything like that, and um, and it's like I have to search through my folders because it's not even like there's one primary folder, like an email where you have like your inbox and mm-hmm. then you can sort things. Yeah. It is literally just like, so you want to find this one message from this random person that you can't find in any other platform. Let's just bury it. Or like in the chat, uh, Seattle Beery going back to the MySpace days. Uh, so-and-so is mm-hmm. under underlined. I mean, there, uh, there, I agree. There I, is, I completely well, agree. I mean, MySpace is still around. Now there's space. Hey, someone took the original MySpace code. I'm just like, that's a great idea. I wonder how long it'll be before the people, Justin Timblake says, yeah, you got to shut that down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Oh, and I, I also got to update the um, the title. Let, let me do that while I let everybody know. We are live tonight, week of March 2nd, 2021. Right here on the on Twitch TV, we're here every Tuesday night from 9:30 to 11, sometimes 11:15, give or take. Um, we're part of the Voice of Geeks Network over at tw- they're at Twitch TV slash Vogue Network and also VogNetwork.com. They kick things off on Sundays with uh, the Bobby Blackwolf Show and Orange Lounge Radio, and we're here. We kind of part of it. We have fun. We do the whole thing and all that rigmarole. So. Now that we got all the good stuff out of the way, um, kicking things off with how was your week, how was your day? Ari, you go do that while I take care of some fine-tuning stuff in the background. Uh, well, uh, today was payday, which was good, though uh, most of that went to the rent check, which is the last one before it'll uh, go up next month. It's a good thing you got that, um... 
that raise, you know, that promotion at work, so it's not so bad, you know. Mm-hmm. And plus, I'm supposed, I'm supposed to be getting a uh, back pay because, you know, collectors ha- got a uh, new contract, and and part of it is a uh, retroactive uh, pay raises. Ka-ching. Only problem is, yeah, but uh, we don't know when it's coming in, and uh, you know, this is going to be the last time this happens because you know. Like the the time frame in question for it was when I was still uh, a collector. Gotcha. Okay. And uh, my birthday was this past Friday. I had contemplated not going into work, but you know, just went anyway. No, I I, I totally get that. I mean, for me, it's sort of like um, I'll I'll take that day off, or I'll take the day after off if I know if I'm going to be up to up to no good or something like that, you know. <laughs> but yeah, it was wasn't really much of a celebration anywhere. Uh, I didn't really go out to do anything I wanted, or even like go in a go to any like town or store I wanted to go. Mm. To. But uh, two weeks from now, uh, I have a vacation coming up. I had picked them out when I thought we were be going to a. Uh, Zenkai Con, right. up to Lancaster, but whatever, I'll take a free week off from work. That would be perfect. You spend the whole week at home, you kind of catch up on some of your gaming, catch up on some shows, kind of clean up around the house, and just kind of live life for a week, you know? Yeah, I also wanted to uh, bop down to the Cape May Brewing Company and uh, maybe take a walk to uh, Ocean City because, you know, like the shore just makes me feel nice and calm and uh, at peace, and I kind of need that. You know what get, make me nice and calm and full of peace? Uh-huh. Um, when the upstairs neighbors are not home, I don't have to hear the kids running around and screaming. I won't have to hear um, the the mother losing her proverbial shit. You know, I mean, look. Actually, I'll get into it on my weekend day, but, you know, please carry on. Uh, that's about it. My uh, friend got me uh, Cowboy Bebop on Blu-ray. Nice. The series. Nice. And uh, Mako-chan's uh, backlog of gifts came this weekend, and uh, I'll talk about some of them later on. Okay, cool. Because you, uh, you, you really got to see them. <laughs> awesome. Ichigo, how was your week? How was your day? Um, well, this week I'm taking off from streaming at least um, until next, was it next Sunday, I believe? Mm-hmm. So uh, basically, I took this week off so that I could um, take a little time to work on the house and do a lot of chores that I've kind of built up around. Um, when you stream pretty regularly, you don't really get a lot of time. And one, like break times, you have to kind of schedule in yourself, which mm-hmm. I think is a very important thing for streamers and people who are doing a lot of their own work to do. Unfortunately, capitalism kind of beats it into us that we need to be working, and any day we're not working, we're, like, failures, or we're not making money, or we're not, yeah, like, I, producing content. You, you know what it is? It's more like, when you become a streamer, you set your own schedule, and you got streamers who will, who will stream seven days a week, and I think some streamers forget, when you do this for a living, it is your job, but as with a lot of jobs, you actually have a schedule like you work monday to friday from eight to four or something like that i think some streamers forget that so it's like you know well and and well to me it's not just streaming though like i've been doing the indie design work game for a while for a long time Mm -hmm. and it it's literally just that we are taught from a young age that like you work to yourself to the bone and you're loyal to the company and you're basically um you're shamed or you're punished for taking time off, even if it's in, like, your... Even if you have paid time off, even if you have sick days and stuff like that, and it's a matter of, like, the the capitalist side of our, our society of, if you're not producing, if you're not working, then you're not a good worker and you're not part of society. And I feel like that That's shouldn't be something that we're shamed for or that we... Um, 
we we don't anticipate because a lot of these companies out there that are doing this to you basically can replace you. They'll turn around and replace you. So if you have time off, take that time off. Take See, a mental health day. It's, take a sick yeah, day. It, um, but if you're a streamer, you have to build that in for yourself. Mm -hmm. If you're an indie designer or an indie company, build that in for yourself. Burnout is really hard and especially hitting a lot of us really rough. So if you're going through a very heavy time right now, like make that time for yourself. It's hard, but it's definitely worth it. See, and I totally get that because I was just thinking today because I was talking to Mako about something and, and I was just thinking about the time that um, I went and I, I had, I couldn't go to work one day because I had a really bad toothache. I had to have an extraction done and, you know, and I paid Ouch. for it, whatever. And here's the thing. Right after I had the dental extraction, I took my happy ass to work. My manager yelled at me saying, you know, you did not have to come in. It was understandable. And he sent me home. And my, I guess my mind was so wired to that, you know, I had sick days. I had PTO. But I didn't think to use it because I decided, I, let me go to work. Then again, this is not the first time I have had dental work done and I have gone to work right after. So it's like. I didn't want to waste a sick day. And it's kind of funny. It's like, we don't want to waste a sick day when we're sick, but we'll gladly use it to play sick to go do something else, you know? Uh -huh. And I feel like self-care and self like, that that's why there's been such a movement of it in the last few years. Mm -hmm. is that, And it's been brought to the forefront of like mental health and all this other stuff is because especially now that a lot of us have moved online where everything is instant everything is accessible by the touch of a button even people now and that's why there's a lot of talk about zoom burnout or you know your friends just don't we don't have anything left to say like we don't have extravagant vacations or family photos to share or holiday practices we're going through we're all kind of going through this collective like mental ha like force of having to slow down because the mm -hmm. world is telling us that we have to slow down. And I feel like a lot of people just aren't mentally prepared for that. You know, I, I, I have to agree with that because I kind of feel like that because come end of March, I would have been out of work for a year. I haven't really looked for a job. I am not bothered by the fact that I am not working because I am basically financially covered per se. The money that I am getting, I'm okay with that. I am fine with that. So, you know, it it is what it is. And I'm not freaking out. It's probably why, you know, I'm in no rush to do certain things in my life, you know? And um, and I see it to me, he says, I've been burned out for years after being jaded for years. I've gone diamond I, I brother, if I if I can uh -huh. if I could go into my fridge right now and get the top shelf swill, I would. But for now, it'll be this. Yeah, I yeah, it's just it's one of those things now, at least for my weekend day, that I I'm taking off that week to mm -hmm. bring it back to the topic at hand. Um, I'm taking off this week just so that I can get things done. I've been meaning to like, um, my hubs wants to use my car because my car is in a little bit better condition than his. So I've been trying to switch over that stuff, but that's right. a whole like rigmarole of stuff to do, you know? And then I want to try and rearrange my studio, but that's a whole situation where with the way my brain works in order to clean something, or at least like deep clean something, I have to break it completely apart and re fit everything together. So it's a whole puzzle and it just takes a lot of time. Not only that, but now I'm reworking my storefront and doing a lot more social media posts. And in order yeah. to create content, mm -hmm. you have to create the content to create the content. Yeah, and so it's so <laughs> it's true. A whole, like, and the fact it's a spiral. Ichigo, the fact that you said you wanted to break down your studio and clean stuff, so I'm almost tempted to say, "I'm meet me at the train at the train station. I'm coming down." Why? I'm coming to help you. Why? I have nothing to do for the next three days. I need something to do. It's God it's damn it. Crazy. No, just gonna, okay. like, no, no, no. I'm just saying. And there, and there I am yeah, I, at the train station and I show up looking like an extra off the set of Breaking Bad. I'm like, let's get let's get down to business. Yeah. No, it's, honestly, it's not so much that I need to like clean everything because I do keep the studio very clean. It's just a matter of like, I, I don't, um, 
I don't have enough space for all my things. Mm -hmm. And so I have to kind of go through a seasonal rotation. I don't know if anybody else in hobbies or like um, with miniatures or like um, other hobbies and stuff have to do this all the time. But like you rotate out. <laughs> Even I know, I know. Uh, so, for, for, over there. For those of you, for stuff. those, for those of you who are listening, I am. <laughs> Pointing behind me when Ichigo says place to put stuff. Remember, yeah. I, I've yeah. been in this this apartment for about seven years. I have shit still packed up because I don't have room for it. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, a lot of it for me is just like my way of mentally organizing things. And I don't know if anybody else in our chat has this way of organizing things was basically like I'm a very visual organizer. So I like mm. to be able to see things mm -hmm. because then I can know where everything is, which is another reason with executive dysfunction. Like I'm good at piles organizing, but piles organizing does not serve me. So no, no, I've tried no. to you, 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 you are refocus right. that energy and refocus that way I process information through like my fabric library or my, my yarn wall that I know you guys have seen pictures or yeah. whatever before. So it's just, it's that process and that's why I'm taking the week off mm -hmm. and that's why uh, when I come back, I'm hoping to have a little bit more of a functional space and a functional like mental capacity. I'm hoping it will refresh me. There you go. To get back into streaming. But anyway, mm -hmm. uh, moving on. Now, before we get into my weekend day, let me just do this real quick. I am going to close my bathroom door and it's not because I want to hide it. I just want to point out there. The collection behind you. Yes, for those of you who are listening to the podcast, behind me is boxes of stuff that was behind my bookcase. My original plan was to pull all of this out, go into my storage closet there, pull all of that out, and do what Ichigo just said. Visualize everything. I was going to lay shit everywhere out so I could properly put stuff away in my storage closet, put stuff all the way in the back that I know I wasn't going to need. Get some brand new comic book boxes and throw all my comics in the back because I don't really collect comics anymore. And if I do, I'm okay with leaving them in a stack out here and then when the time comes, go in and put them away. I have not done any of that. It's probably going to happen before this summer is out, one way or another. So, and you know, and I'll say this much for my weekend day, as always. It's the same, except that I have been up again till 5 o'clock in the morning, and it's because I have been gaming. Now that uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake is done, I have been playing Soccer Wars. I've been enjoying every single minute of it, and I just discovered earlier today that there is a Shin Sakura Tyson anime on Funimation that's been sitting there for a year, and I had no fucking clue about it. And I'm like, well, and I'm watching, and I'm playing the game, I'm like, so when are we going to get the anime? Somehow it, it, it went under the radar and I had no clue. So I decided to go looking for the soundtrack because they updated the opening theme with some, with some, with, 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 with um, trumpets and stuff. And I'm really liking it. And that's why I discovered, Oh, there's a fan. There's a fan sub. And did I see it's ripped from Funimation? Like Funimation has it. Before I left today, I watched the first episode. I'm like, yep, yeah, I'm back down in that rabbit hole one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what else. Um, that's basically has been it. I have been playing that. Uh, I started playing Final Fantasy Legend 1 and 2 again. And, I fi and here's the thing. When I was a kid, and by kid, I'm talking about when I was like 14, 15. Final Fantasy Legend... 1, 2, and 3 were always in my Game Boy. Mostly 2 and 3. I skipped 1 because I kept getting killed within the first 5 minutes. And I'm just like, how am I going to kill these monsters if I only have one person in my in my party? Who would have thought like almost 30 years later by reading the FAQ, before I leave the tower, I go over to the guild and collect 3 people. <laughs> I had no clue because in 2 and 3, you're giving your full... Your full crew, right then and there. Uh, and Bond says he can play FF1 and 2 in his sleep. I I actually enjoy 2 the way the creatures were, but I'm talking Legend uh, 1, 2, and 3, which uh, which is uh, Saga, front, which is, I say, I think it's romance, it's Saga, and I believe for Super NES, Super Famicom was, was uh, Romancing Saga, and I think for... PlayStation with Saga Frontier or something like that. I, I I don't I don't know, but that's 
what I have been doing. That's what I've been gaming. And, and, and now that I am no longer in Facebook jail, I'm like, well, I can jump back on the social media and start going, start catching up on shit. And then I'm like, that takes away from my game time, my anime time. I think I'm going to go back and game some more. And, and that's what I've been up to. So that's basically has been my week and day. Uh, housekeeping notes, if it'll go up. Come on. Right. No, I don't want the virtual key. There we go. Um, let's see. Uh, me and Under the Pale, we are retooling our weekly uh, talk show. I think we're going along the lines of we're going to do still talk, but we're going to throw some gaming in there, too. So we're working on that and we're going to see how that plays out. Um, also, if you have have you noticed in our pre-roll, there was a brand new banner, a brand new background that we have with our logo on a 45 degree angle going diagonal, which is pretty cool. That was created by uh, Chris Smith, who were, who was one of the mods over at Michelle Knotts' uh, Twitch. So show show them some love over at Twitch TV slash Michelle Knotts. So I am very appreciative for, for Chris's work on this. So it's great. I still have to do a little bit of fine tuning because if you look, you can still kind of see the logo behind our our cameras and something like that. And I've been kind of fixing it and tweaking it in the background. You know, it's just something that I can, I can see. And the last thing is, uh, we will be live at Zen virtual Zenkai con 2021. Uh, join us Sunday at 3 PM for our virtual podcast it is basically will be a one hour version of our normal show, which means, um, most likely we won't be talking about any topics. We'll just be going off the rails from day one. That, that's just going to happen because there's no way we can fit an hour and 30 hour 40 into an hour but we'll do our best it'll just be the intro how was our week and day uh ichigo will come up with a topic we'll all talk for like the next 45 minutes how on how great this is and so forth and making all these points and then we'll spend the last 15 minutes uh talking about one article from japan and wrapping it up <laughs> wait what topic am i supposed to be making up and when Ichigo, you do realize every time you come up with some, you come up with stuff where if whatever is on the rundown, you will jump over to something else and we're all like, she makes a good point. Write that down. She makes well, a good I actually point. will yeah. be doing a panel in Zenkai yeah. Con because I am actually one of the Cosplay Masquerade judges. So hey. I'm not yet, actually. <laughs> the Cosplay Masquerade openings for entries um, for costumers, if you have like a progress folder and stuff like that. Um, you can enter on their website. I'll see if I can share the link for you guys. But uh, they're open until the 6th of March. So if you still uh, have not had a competition to enter with your local lovely costumes, um, you can definitely do that. And if you have costumes that you can't enter into competition, but you still would like to show off, Zenkai Con is also hosting a costume showcase. And I will share those links for you in the chat momentarily. And that is awesome. And as Bonds of Little Six says, uh, Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. I could walk a person through through that game, how to get the special members and etc. I remember I bought the game, the original for PlayStation. I traded it in a month later because I'm like, I don't like tacticals. If I had known that was going to be worth a lot of money, twenty almost twenty years later, I would have held on to it. I even played it for for I think Game Boy Advance. I'm like. I can't do this. I can't do this tactical game. Meanwhile, I can sit there and play Project Cross Zone like it's nobody else's business. So anybody who can play tactical games like that, much respect to you. So much respect to you. Project Cross Zone. Uh, let's see. What else do we have here? Um, Geek Roundtable. This is the part of the show where we talk about some of the more geekier aspects of our weekend day. You know, st stuff that wouldn't normally fit in there. So, and or we kind of like to share off some cool stuff. So... What you got for us this week, Ari? Well, aside from uh, you know being excited that Code Lyoko is on Netflix, I uh, I did say that oh, I got is? Mako's. Yeah. Ooh. I did say that I got Mako's uh, backlog of presents from uh, mm -hmm. two birthdays and a Christmas ago, and uh, she got me this new uh, card game about existing. I'll have to look. I haven't opened it yet. I'll have to look at it. Uh, a collection of uh, Hell's Kitchen spices and sauces. Mm. And then she got me this. Nice. 
a friggin' drinking horn. It, it's freaking awesome looking. I mean, I kind of don't want to use it because, you know, I'm afraid that I might, you know, put like tea or juice in it or something else and uh, end up ruining it because obviously you can't put this freaking thing in the uh, in the dishwasher. See, that's that's something that's something you hand wash and you put up on the shelf, you know. Do yeah, not and you put the. Little, uh, kickstand looking yep. thing and you put a sign do not touch upon death you know yeah well it's just me living here so <laughs> i'd be you know getting into arguments with myself and going stir crazy but oh you, you know, too goes. Huh? oh you too <laughs> <sighs> uh yeah that's that's it for me though hey it you go what do you have for geek round table It you go. It you go. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> I don't know for a second. I don't know what my brain was doing. Um, I, yeah. We know what your brain was doing. Your brain was like, I'm thinking Arby's. Yeah, I know. I'm thinking <laughs> Arby's. We've got the meat. Um, yeah, no, it's been that kind of day. I need more caffeine. That's what I need. But uh, I've been working on, obviously, like I said before, um, I stream and stuff like that. Um, for a weekend day... Uh, if you've been following any of the projects we've been doing on stream, I did a painting method that I've used a lot before, and it worked. Mm. So I'm happy with that. Um, other nerdy things I guess I've done this week or past week. I don't know. Like, we don't really do a lot. So, like, I'm kind of boring. Yeah, it's, there's it's not all a lot I have hood. that's new. There's not a lot I have that's, like, super fancy or anything. I've been still continuing to work on Scott Pilgrim. Oh, I've been watching... Um, if you like horror shows and you haven't seen the series yet on Netflix, you can check out Two Sentence Horror Stories. And they actually do a really great job um, with that selection of horror stories. And there's actually two seasons. So if you haven't watched it yet, um, mm. it has been something that I've been binging recently. So, um, yeah. And we're working on a corset for a cosplay, I guess. Um, in the stream, I've been working on a Victorian-style corset to do... Uh, Yuko Ichihara's Writing Habit from Clamp's art book. Nice. Um, so I am working on that, which is kind of geeky. But, uh, And I'll be judging and doing a panel at ZenkaiCon this coming year. So if you want to learn about Resin 101 or uh, you want to participate in the costume contest, I have posted the links in the chat on this side or this side. One of these sides. <laughs> but that's pretty much it. Yeah. See, that's the... See, that's the thing I don't like about, I mean, I have an issue with, with, with my webcam, like, like in our, um, in, in our, uh, Skype chat, in our Skype studio here, I can point to, to my left and I am pointing to my left. If I look at my camera, it, I'm pointing to the right. And there are times I'm just like, no, no, this way. And I'm just trying, no, that yeah, way. Yeah, well, it, it's a stage thing. It's <laughs> yeah. stage direction. So instead of being like right, it's stage right. Because mm -hmm. if we're on the stage, for us, it's right. But for them, it's left. You know, and the other way around. It's all like remembering your stage directions. But I can never remember if I flipped my camera or not. Mm -hmm. And if you flip your camera, then it's the reverse of the reverse. And your brain is just like... The mathematical equations of like see, but that's just, that's just it. if I could if I could flip the camera, the Skype the Skype chat, I can ignore. I'm fine. So if I'm sitting like this, it looks like I'm sitting the way you see me. So it's okay, you know. My webcam doesn't have that option to flip the screen. You know, if I bought a Logitech one, it'd be a different story. But you know. well, no, you can switch it on OBS. If you go into OBS, mm. you can flip your, your cameras and stuff. But I did want to reach out and say, thank you, Super Stakey, for the 100 bits. And you're super awesome. So thank you for that. Thank you, brother. We appreciate that. Uh -huh. We do have a notification I'm working on. It's going to pop up in the, in the open space on the on the right here. So you could check that out. Um, Bonds of Little Six said something that just triggered something in my head. I researched Night of the Living Dead, Day of the Living Dead, and Dawn of the Dead. Let me say this. My mom should not have allowed us to watch those films. Okay, it's rewatch. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I had an aunt that took us to the movies. Not a real aunt, but, you know, auntie, whatever. Took us to see Child's Play 3. That Good movie... God, man. That movie fucked me up for horror films. I think that is that is that movie is the reason why I will not watch them. 
I, I was a little squeamish when I watched Saw, okay? Not Saw, uh, Scream. When I saw Scream 1, 2, and 3, I was like, you know? I, will, I won't even watch Final Destination, okay? I think that one movie fucked me up on horror films. I might be... Okay, so, like, the only horror movie that really messed with me was I Know What You Did Last Summer. Mm -hmm. And it, that's only because, like, The Hook Hand. I don't know why, but my brain as a child, I was just like, The Hook Hand is terrifying! And, but all the other horror movies mm -hmm. I just laughed at. Like, Scream, when, um, when, like, the... Was it, like... I don't know, the silicone implant or whatever comes out, and yeah. it's just like, it just, it makes me laugh. So okay, hard. but anyway. that, okay, I have to I admit. I haven't seen any of the, uh, the Saw movies. No, no, I didn't mean Saw, I meant to say Scream. I won't, yeah, I will, sorry. I will not go near the Saw films, but that one thing, that is kind of funny. Now, if it's not, if it's more of a psychological, like a mind fuck movie, like Butterfly Effect, oh, I'll sit there and watch that like it's nobody else's business. Those I do enjoy. But, like, 13 Ghosts, oh, how, no. Nah. No, no, you, 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 you got to sweeten the pot to get me to watch those films. Now, now that we got that out the way, um, normally, um, Mako-chan covers, um, updates on con cancellations, but since she is out tonight, I will be covering that. Um, first up is Momocon. Momocon has basically has canceled their main event. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, fuck you, Texas. <clears throat> Sorry. Something got caught in my throat. Sorry. They are having... An, uh, they are automatically rolling tickets for over to 2022. May 26th to the 29th. But they are going to have a special winter event on December 19th to the 20th. And I am going to assume it's going to be a virtual thing. So, good luck to them. I've never been to Momocon, but... That's a, that's a, that's a, that's on my list of cons to check out. So let's see what else do we have here. Um, Faname Con. I went to this con back in two thousand five, and I finally met the cast, I, the hosts of Orange Lounge Radio, and here we are. You know, they are going virtual for the twenty twenty one event this year. Um, they have not um said when, but I have a feeling it's going to happen over the 28th to the 31st. So check out their website, I believe, uh, fondamate.org, and for more information. Let's see what else do we have here. Um, now, part of this popped up on Orange Lounge Radio on Sunday about the LA Tourism and Convention Board. I believe this is on the lines of E3 being canceled, and it was like, he found out through the tourism site as opposed to them sending out proper information about what's going on. But um, basically, according to the tourism site, there will be no AX. It'll be a virtual event instead, like last year. So, And it's kind of sad because this would have been the 30th anniversary of Anime Expo. Um, there is no... Let's see. Yeah, it's going to be over the 4th of July weekend. So most likely it will be a virtual event from July 2nd to July 5th. So definitely uh, check that out. I believe there is one more here. Ah, Anime Japan. Um... Okay, so I'll break this down. Uh, Singaporean events and marketing agency Sozo PT Liquid uh, Limitations... The organization behind, of the Anime Festival's Asia Convention announced on Monday that it's working with the Anime Japan 2021 Convention to provide an on-demand live streaming program for the stage events for this year's online-only convention. The stream will be available for all stage programs with a special English commentary. The stream will be available in the United States, South Korea, Thailand, Singapore, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Macau. Tickets are available already available on the site. Tickets cost about $30 for the show's public days or a two-day ticket for about $57. Prices for tickets in Japan are, are, different, are different from the English stream. It's $36 a day, but two-day tickets are $69. Hmm? 
The ticket will also allow buyers to watch an archive of streams for one day following the stream. The event will have an online only business days portion on March 29th and 30th that will cost 11,000 11, yen to participate, which is probably about 10 bucks. The organizers of the event announced in February that the event will be online only since they have canceled the convention's in-person event at the Tokyo Big Site due to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic and the updated new state of emergency in Tokyo and other prefectures in Japan. Eventually, the, the convention was previously planned to be a physical and online event, so good thing they had that set up, you know? The online event will stream panels from companies that will have booths at the physical event and will also stream stage panels. The merchandise will be available for purchase online. Now, Anime Japan isn't really an anime convention per se. Think of Anime Japan as basically what E3 is, you know. That's basically what it is. You go to E3, you check out all the new games that are coming out, some of the new gaming technology that's available you wait a while, you try the game, you get a demo, you're explained it from like 9 to 5 for like 4 days and that's it. That's basically Anime Japan. It's more like panels about the industry, upcoming titles that you may be seeing soon and stuff like that. So, that's why it's more that's why it's paid for it because it's more of a trade show than it is an actual convention. It's more industry than yes. it is a fandom catering mm -hmm. convention like you might network and you might find out what your favorite companies are making in the next year or play their prototype games or their games that they're going to be putting out early but it is a pay to play kind of process mm -hmm. let's see now speaking of conventions and cancelizations and stuff that's happening Ichigo I hear Otakon is doing well um I wouldn't say well, but I'd well, say that they're probably be. surprised uh, the amount of positive reinforcement that they've gotten from the community. Um, I imagine that they did. I mean, one reason they're going to put out an article like this or a, a, a call for funding and stuff from their public is because they have a public. Mm -hmm. They have a target market that definitely wants to see them uh, win and come back and become a safe space again for nerds to gather once we're through this hellscape. Uh, gestures at everything. Um, so when it comes to their particular situation, they have raised over $34,000 as of the first of this month. So yesterday, Oda Corp president uh, Brooks Zeralt has announced in a newsletter on Saturday that the organization has raised more than $34,000 uh, in donations to support its Otakon anime convention. Now, this is off, out of the 250000 that they need in order to kind of keep the convention running. So it is a dent. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure it's only growing. They started, the organization started requesting donations for the first time in January of this year, while also revealing that it's continuing to evaluate plans for next year and this year, and noted that the event may potentially close permanently because of the cancellation of Otakon 2020 due to the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. The organization is in a precarious position, and Zeralt in an earlier newsletter said, we use the proceeds from each year to plan for the next Otakon and make sure we survive until then. So without the income from Otakon 2020, the early pre-registrations we would normally see at this time of year, we are in a very precarious position. Put simply, in the next few months, we will have to make a decision to continue planning for Otakon 2021 20 or potentially close our doors forever. Yeah. This year's Otakon is scheduled to be held at the Walter E. Washington Convention Center in Washington, D.C. from August 6th to 8th. Last year's canceled Otakon was originally scheduled for July 3rd, 31st, sorry, to August 2nd at the same convention center. And they held the, or, yeah, we held, well, Otakon held the uh, virtual event on August 1st of last year. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I see that they are doing better than I think that they expected to. Well, that's good. Um, go ahead. No, I'm saying that's good. And I, I'm, you know, kudos to them for at least reaching out and seeing if they can make it. Um, it, I, it is an uphill battle. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, they were in the red, I think, before now, or at least they were just in the black, like just in the black. So something like this is really crippling to even the biggest of companies at this point. It can be very crippling process. So... Um, you know, kudos to the fandom, kudos to the uh, people out there 
I know that you can still support them through Amazon Smile, I think, and yes. their storefront. Uh, at least that's what it says in the article. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can make donations, one-time donations, on, on those same platforms, I believe. So yeah. I've actually flipped my Amazon Smile to support Otakon. And also, while I was out, I even got a notification that ZenkaiCon is doing something similar as well. Um, I I'm going to say this now. Do not be surprised if other conventions start putting up charity and GoFundMe's to keep it going, because... He... If this can happen to Otakon, it can happen to Andy. Exactly. And, Just and remember not... this. Oh, go ahead. The mo I, I would say, personally, the a lot of the funds that these cons are sitting on, they're paying for storage fees. Bel look at all the equipment that a convention brings in, and to put it in storage, that shit is not cheap. So. And also, like, on the other flip of that coin, be don't be surprised, even if you've done your best and you've done what mm -hmm. you can to donate and you've done what you can to spread the word, if these mm -hmm. conventions, like, just, they don't happen. Like, unfortunately, the fandom can support itself to a point, but even with the the donations and stuff like that, don't take it personally and don't... Don't blame yourself if the convention still falls through. Like, we're doing what we can, and people are doing what they can to support these things, but sometimes when situations like this happen, a lot of it is because things were mismanaged on the front end way, way early before, mm -hmm. early on. And, and when you bank this kind of problem on top of that, it's just like fuel on that fire. So even if they make the money that they're trying to make now... It's going to be, it, like it said in the article, it's to offset those costs, mm -hmm. but those costs are always incurring. Yep. I've seen so many posts online about this situation where people misconstrue or misunderstand why Otakon has done this. And they're like, well, well, what is their budget? Where is this money going to? But their budget has and will always be public domain mm -hmm. like it has to be for them to be a 501c3. You when can look up the books. Profit, when you're non for profit. Everything is government-based or government information. So if you have questions or anything like that and you are a member, which is what you are if you attend Otakon, you pay for your ticket, mm -hmm. you can have easy access to this paperwork. It's just a matter of looking it up. And also, anyway, I just wanted to yeah, disperse that and, information. Yeah, and that is great information. And I also want to throw this in here, sort of like another way to explain it. Let's say a convention has a con. After everything is said and done, the convention walks away with $50,000, pure profit. The con would take maybe 10000 and put it in the coffers. And by coffers, I'm talking about a savings account, like money in case shit happens, that type of thing. And they have forty grand. let us say that for the following year, the con spends thirty grand of that to put on next year's show. At next year's show, they bring in sixty grand. So they keep, and they realize we can do this on thirty grand, and they keep putting the money in the coffers. As years go on, fees go up. Sometimes a con may not get as many people, so they may not make as much money, so they have to dip into the coffers to offset the balance. And or in some cases, where if they do experimental content, mm -hmm. or they try yep. something, or they maybe they have smaller musical guests, or mm -hmm. they don't have people that are as as they don't draw in as many customers right. like Ronma was saying mm -hmm. and so they go in the negative yep. well where's that money going to come from it's got to come they from can't somewhere yeah. the, uh, they can't expect the people to just you know go fund me to uh, out of the red all, all the time can they correct no and also too like in our in our chat here at twitch.tv slash anime jam session bond 006 is saying fees fees will always exist yep. and that is something that is continual and as bob coffee in our chat talked about earlier the the uh was it sdcc or uh anime expo had to pay a, basically sign a contract with the lacc through 2030 and a lot of that is just yep. regional you know depending on the region you're in there are very limited convention spaces that are that exorbitantly large um to house them so contracts have to be paid yep you know, the quarter of a million dollars Otakon has to pay on the uh, convention center in D.C. is expensive, you know. Mm -hmm. oh, um, yeah. So it's all and these also, things yeah, that have to be paid every year. And here's another prime example of fees. Take a credit card. Pay off the credit card. 
and don't touch it, I guarantee you within a year, you're going to get a bill from the credit card company. Annual fee. You may not oh, even yeah. touch it. College. You got to pay the annual fee. College debt, man. I know mm -hmm. some people that are still paying off their college debt where the debt and the interest is more than what they paid to get the money to go to school. Like, I, know I, I know I'm still yeah. uh, paying off. Same. Yeah. And it's Dear Navient. Yeah, Dear Navi. Go ahead, Ari. Those sons of bitches aren't getting anything. I'll reap yeah, my and bonds are saying the conventions thank you very much. have mm -hmm. to pay insurance, staff, travel, shipping, mm -hmm. legal services, guest services, contracts. And they worked at the Jacob Javits Center, and they've seen behind the curtains. Mm -hmm. And paying the base staff, yeah. even Re it's a minimum rate. Well, Repop pays their staff. That, though, that much I do know. It comes to 501c3. They literally are not legally able to pay any staff anything. They have a lawyer on on the thing, and they have like they have like two or three, I think like sets of people that they can pay a certain fee to keep them on on call. Mm -hmm. But that's retainer it. fee. Yeah, a retainer fee, and then like for the companies that they hire to, they can pay those people. But all yep. the people that work for them are volunteers. Mm -hmm. so. un un unless it's a read pop convention, then yeah, you, you getting for paid. Profit. If it's a for yeah. profit mm -hmm. convention, yeah. they mm -hmm. can pay their workers. Yep. See, one thing about this podcast is we laugh and we joke, but you also get educated as well. We learned something. Yeah, the fact that what you learned here is probably stuff you should have you should have not learned in school, but shows that eh, what's you know, education. Anywho, public school systems. <laughs> Don't get me started. Uh, What's that about all your public schools only having numbers and not names? <laughs> Look, that's New York City. I went, I lived in Mount Vernon. Yes, all the public schools in Mount Vernon had numbers, but they had names, damn it, okay? I'm still mad they renamed my elementary school. <laughs> Who the fuck is Edward Williams? Get the fuck out of here. No. <laughs> no. I, I, no. So, let's take a step back. Let's go back a few years, going to conventions. Remember when Hatsune Miku and Vocaloid was popular? It was like at least a third of the cosplayers were running around in Vocaloid. A third of the skits were Vocaloid. And it's like, it comes and goes. Well, I don't remember. I spent most of the time in alcohol-infused days. I envy you, sir. sir. I envy you, good sir. Oh, 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 oh. So, get ready for that wave again because we are getting a Hatsune Miku anime. And there are people on my Facebook that are like excited about this. I'm like, eh, I can wait. So, according to the press release from Graphic India, uh, Hatsune Miku is going to get her own anime. The series is being developed by Krypton Future Media, which is the company that created the original Vocaloid software. This is in joint venture with the Indian media company Graphic India and the American licensing, licensing company Carlin West Agency. In addition to the series, an original series of webtoons and comics are also in the works, creating a Mikuverse that features live action elements in addition to animation and music. Oh my god, Kid Video is coming to mind now. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Fucking hated that show. <laughs> Fans are also promised a modern, entertaining story with an exciting new look for Hatsune Miku and scripts that will resonate with the longtime Miku fans and beyond. Details on when the series will be released are yet to be announced. Released in 2007 as the very first Vocaloid, Hatsune Miku is now a worldwide sensation who has lent her voice to countless original songs and musical collabs. She has performed at sold-out concerts around the world, including a very own concert tour and event, Miku Expo, which will be held as a free online event this year. Graphic India co-founder Shahrad Devar Devarajan and Carlin West Agency founder Carlin West are credited as creators and executive producers for the series. Krypton Future Media CEO will also serve as an executive producer. And as Bob Coffey says, time for the return of the Domino Zap featuring Hatsune Miku. 
I kind of remember that. And there's going and there's going to be shipping. There's going to be shipping wars, and it's going to be it's going to be bad. It's going to be so so bad. Is. Now it's uh, yeah, but even now it's uh, it's all about the virtual YouTubers. Look, like uh, Corona uh, Corona Inugami. L- look, there's one when it comes to this. There's only one thing I, that comes to mind. It's a YouTube video I need to post later. Somebody redid the K on opening to Vocaloid, and it's like the cutest thing ever. So, n- and that's it. Anywho, moving right along to some good topics, good anime. Ari, what's going on with Spirited Away? Uh, let's see. Uh, it heads to the stage for Tony Award winning director of Les Mis. Mm. Uh, Tony Award winning musical theater director of Les Mis Rob and associate director of the Royal Shakespeare Company, John Caird, will be bringing Spirited Away to the stage at Tokyo Imperial Theater in February 2022. With the blessing of producer Suzuki and Hayao Miyazaki himself. The first promotion trailer is released in the Japanese press today alongside the first visual. Upon the announcement, Studio Ghibli producer Toshiko Suzuki had some very kind words to say about Karen. John's a wonderful guy, but Miyazaki and I really like him. He is so happy and we gave him a no-face piggy bank. <laughs> I look forward to seeing how Chihiro develops on stage. Ugh. Mm. Ugh. John Carrot also commented that he has long considered Miyazaki to be an outstanding genius in the world of film and one of the greatest living visionaries in the field of animation. And he said he looks forward to the, deepening the partnership with his friends at to- Toho through his new relationship with Ghibli and its brilliant sh- chief producer, Suzuki. It was also revealed that two of Japan's biggest female stars will be sharing the role of Chihiro. Both Kana Hashimoto, known for playing a live-action version of Kagura and Gintama, and, and Kaguya and Kaguya-sama Love Us War, <clears throat> and Mone Kamishirashi, known for voicing Mitsuha in Your Name, and playing Favina in Knight's Tale, will be splitting the role between them. Mm. Kam- uh, Kamishirashi previously worked with Carrot on Knight's Tales, with this being Hashimoto's stage debut. So, uh, February th- or March 2022 in Tokyo, April in 2022 in Osaka, uh, Fukuoka in May, Sapporo in June, and finally finishing in Nagoya in uh, June to July t- 2022. So, we got a while. I I, I kind of want to see this. I mean, you got, so, you got the... The director of Lay Miz on this. I mean, come on. It doesn't get any better than that. But that's just me. Which reminds me, I still gotta watch Earwig and the Witch. I really enjoyed Last, that. Last uh, stage play I saw was uh, the <clears throat> uh, what do you call the uh, American Idiot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. My old roommate saw that. That was years ago, though. And holy crap, Nintendo released an update for the Wii U. What year is this? The same people who were... The same the same year where people who were begging for Diamond and Pearl remakes are bitching about the Diamond and Pearl remakes. L- 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 let me just say this. The same people that are complaining about that are going They'll to be buy first in line to buy it. Exactly, exactly. The animation style is not meant for you. It never was meant for you. It was meant for the new kids that are coming in. You liked it when it was all pixelated. These kids are gonna like it when it looks like this. Okay. Plus, it's not also, the plus it's not the sword up. shield engine. So, a heads up. Mm-hmm. A lot of Mario games from Nintendo are being taken off the shelves soon. I know so that if you haven't picked up your titles, make sure you do soon because I know Nintendo is starting to, um, I guess, like clean those out of their systems and off of their selling again. Um, mm-hmm. I guess they've just kind of exhausted what they wanted to do with that franchise. So they're 
taking it and making a turn or a change. Yeah, or I mean, uh, look, uh. it's it, it's three Super Mario 3D games for sixty bucks. That they that the only thing that they did was tweak the controls. Meanwhile, they threw a whole they threw a whole team behind Skyward Sword. And I'm just like, show, shows you where the money goes, either or. So that's okay. You know what? When they, I, I'll stick to my 2D Mario's and 2D Zelda's, I'll be a happy little bastard. So uh-huh. sp- speaking of being a happy little bastard, our Retro Crush is added with the good with the good shit. They are adding. More classic anime to their lineup. They are adding Ronin Warriors, City Hunter, and, and one of my personal favorites on this list, all-purpose cultural cat girl Nuku Nuku. I would gladly buy a Blu-ray re- update, re-release, remaster of that series in a heartbeat. So you're going to get Ronin Warriors um, March 5th. They're releasing these on Fridays. So... If you're working, you come home from work. Some great anime to kick back and relax to for the whole weekend. City Hunter drops on March 12th. Um, on March 19th, you have two other titles called Astro Ganger and Grimm's Fairy Tale Classics. And on the 26th, you get Nuku Nuku and Psycho Armor Govarian. And if you want to see some great, if you want to see something kind of funny, uh, go on YouTube and, and YouTube search Jackie Chan City Hunter. No, Jackie Chan Street Fighter. That's all you need to know. Oh, yeah. I know that clip all too well. And the, for those of you who don't know, um, Jackie Chan played Ryo Saba in a Chinese version of City Hunter. From And from my understanding, he wasn't too fond of the role in the movie. And they kept calling him City Hunter throughout the entire film. There is a scene where they're in an arcade and... They're basically fighting each other as the Street Fighter characters with the music playing in the background. It is so hilariously bad, but yet so damn funny at the same time. And what's also great is that, and I saw this on Twitter uh, a couple of days ago, Retro Crush has made a partnership with Peacock, and some you'll be seeing some Retro Crush anime titles on their streaming service, which is great. Uh, thank you, Bob. I appreciate that. Uh, click and for those of you who are wondering, he just linked me to Nuka Nuku on Blu-ray. So there goes my money. But um, <laughs> and the thing that surprised me the most is the fact that Peacock didn't even put any anime on their on their streaming network because NBC Universal owns the rights to Serial Experiments Lane. They've basically open sourced it. Basically, you are allowed to create your own fanfic, fan, all that. As long as it's within taste, they don't care. They've actually said that. And the fact that one NBC's animes is on Funimation. And if you're probably wondering, how does NBC universalize anime? Remember, after Pioneer Animation rebranded, when spun off its animation division as Genion, Genion merged with Universal. Universal is part of NBC. So any anime titles that's under the Genion brand technically belongs to NBC Universal, which is Comcast. Kind of interesting, you know? What what it is. And if you and I forget the name of this anime. I think it's called Let me see if I can find it. It's on Funimation. And then during the credits, you actually see NBC in the credits. I'm just like, oh. Let's see. Funimation series. There, that's the name of it. It's a long ass title. Well, to me, suppose a kid from the last dungeon moved, moved to a starter town. That's the name of the anime. And when you watch it, you you get the Universal Studios uh, Comcast logo. I'm just like, oh, I mean, that's something that could they could have done, but yeah, licensing and all of that stuff. All three complete series for 45 bucks. Okay. All right, Discotech did this. Yeah, I, I, I'm probably going to have to get this and re-shrink wrap my DVD, my normal DVDs. This will... Be, I'll have... Normally, I would, like, offset... My, if I get the Blu-ray equivalent, I would, like, offset my DVDs unless I have a legitimate reason. 
Ranma DVDs, I will keep. The Nuka Nuka DVDs, I will keep. So, you know. I'm gonna... I, 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 will, be, I will be following that. So... Oh, I didn't even update this. All right, let me do that real quick. And, wow, I think that is it for news. But, um, I realized there is one more thing that, um... And see, Demiri says, I, I'm sure when they let Alfred Hitchcock lapse, they'll pull on anime. Maybe, but right now, at least Retro Crush has some classic titles on there. And for those of you who are asking, who are, who are kind of hyped about G4, expect G4 to be part of Peacock since I think starting this month or next month, all of the WWE, the WWE network has like shut down and folded into Peacock. So, yep. I, I am paying five bucks a month f to get the WWE network along with Peacock. So, I think it's a win win for me. So. Plus, I get to watch it. Yeah, the, it never got to the uh, lofty heights that uh, Vince wanted to see it. Well, yeah, true. Hell, some of the uh, some of the most uh, most notable you know things in the uh, some of the most notable parts of the uh, WWE Network's run was uh, the canceled WWE Network hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> And at least under this, I get to watch the pay-per-views for free. So I'm just like. But um, it works out, I guess. Exactly. Now, one thing I forgot to mention earlier during my weekend day was the fact not during my weekend, but during um, Geek Roundtable was the fact that playing Final Fantasy Legend. These were like games that were always in my Game Boy. So between that and a lot of the classic games that are on Switch Online. I went out and bought a a retro switch controller. Nice. And I'm like, I, I I needed something. So I will say this. The buttons, they feel really good. The Where'd direct you get that from? Amazon. It was like twenty two dollars. Okay, like like who like who made it? Because I've seen Some, it's, 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 it's a third party knockoff. This is not eight bit dough. Okay. And I'm and yeah, I'm because I had seen a couple of them like that. I'm like, huh. And I'm and I'm get and I'm getting to that. The control, the buttons are great. The control sticks are great. The control pad, fucking sucks. Now, let me grab my uh, Hyperkin controller real quick because I, I I on the Hyperkin, if you look at the control the, the control pad, you just push down lightly and that's it. And you're able to go. But the problem with this, when you hold it, it cramps my hands up. And that's why I hate using this, like when I'm gaming. Sometimes I can sit there, depending on what the game is, it's not so bad. On, on this controller, it's no light touch. You have to push down on, on the direction for it to move. And, it, and, it, and, it, and I get hand fatigue from doing that. Outside of that, it's a, it's a pretty solid controller. But I did order the 8 bit dough version, and that's coming tomorrow. And I'm going to test that one out and see. If it has a better directional control, I'm going to keep that and return this one. Because what's funny is that I'm sitting there playing FFL 1, and it's like, I don't, it doesn't feel like a typical Super Nintendo, Gen Super Nintendo controller. It, it didn't feel that way. And as Bonds Up Little Six says, sort of like the Sega Genesis. Yeah. Except with the, yeah, it was something like that, you know. And that's what I want. If the D pad is on par with an OEM SNES controller, that's what I want, and that, and I'll be happy with that. It kind of sucks is I have to pay I paid forty five dollars for that controller where that one was twenty two. Not like the knockoff Switch Pro controller that I have that plays so well. The only thing about the Switch the knockoff Switch Pro controller is that it doesn't turn the console off, and it does have NFC, and I don't care for that. I got, I got my money's worth for paying about 25 for that controller. But when it comes to, like, retro gaming, I kind of wanted a retro controller. Kind of feel like as if when I was 12 all over again, you know. Uh-huh. And Bonzo says, asks, what systems 8-bit though works with? All of them. They have specialty controllers for the classic consoles, the retro consoles at Switch, and so forth. And they have special adapters as well. It's all on their website. 
Yeah, Bob says, the only controllers that, sw that turn Switch on and off are Nintendo OEM controllers. I guess I can't be all that lazy all the damn time. Anywho. <laughs> Not for a lack of trying. Exactly. Now that I've bought up enough time, let's talk about the interesting part of the show that y'all generally stick around for. Meanwhile, in Japan. And I called dibs on Article 2. Because most, most of us feel this. Well, okay then. Guess I'm taking the first one. Go for it. All right, let me bring him up here. Just... <clears throat> uh, t the Tokyo woman, the only person to win the court case against the, G the NHK, is told to pay up. Uh, nothing is more annoying for those residing in Japan than opening the door to reveal a license fee collector for NHK. Famous for persistence and sometimes brutish tactics, the NHK license fee collectors are usually scorned. In fact, many folks come up with a variety of ways to avoid coughing up the technically required fees, which is about 24800 yen, around 230 some odd dollars. <clears throat> some individuals even go as far as contesting your broadcast since the organization threes through court. Not too many success stories, but for the first time ever, a Tokyo woman in the summer of 2020 was able to avoid paying the de facto mandatory fees. But then Tokyo's highest court overturned the decision. The reason originally in line of the argument, which one of the women's case highlighted how the television had a pre-installed signal blocker and a private citizen can't be expected to inherently know how to uninstall one. But the new ruling urges now that technically the woman's television could have a signal booster installed with the right tools. As long as the, elect <clears throat> as long as the electronic device can receive or can be modified to receive a broadcast signal, then it's fair game for the NHK. Hmm. And of, co of course, the leader of the, the party to teach how to not pay for the NHK reception fee has chimed in, commenting that the recent overturn was above all else proof that Japan's judiciary system is rotting. <laughs> In the meantime, the Tokyo woman's lawyer has reported their intention to file an appeal. <clears throat> so, yeah. NHK don't, ain't nothing to fuck with. For, for those of you who are who are curious what NHK is, it's basically Japanese PBS, for the most part. Whereas here, PBS does fundraising. You know, you'll see the telethons on public access channels. Viewers like you. Yep. And you'll see, like, before you watch a show, shows are sponsored by different companies and so forth. That's how they do it. NHK, you know, they just... Money, please. Basically, they go around and they collect the fees to run the network. And people argue um, that they don't want to pay it because they don't watch NHK. And, and to be perfectly honest, they, most of them may be telling the truth because from a, from a support call I did with Verizon, they noticed you know what channels I was watching more or less. So if, let's say, PBS started sending collectors around. I can just have them contact Verizon and they can just look at my account and be like, he hasn't watched uh, WNET, so you can't collect money from him. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. What, what is this? Let me see what this is real quick. Um, and then um, mm -hmm. for those who don't know what the NHK is, it's the Nippon Hoso Kyokai, which is Japanese Broadcasting Corporation. Um, and they don't just knock on your doors. They'll also send mafia members and stuff. It's, <laughs> they're, they're just not a very savory company, whatever. Sean, you have to pay her an HK fee. Yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> they, they're, they're not good people. They're bad people. Anyway. <laughs> good night, everybody. Good night, good night, Ari. Good night, Ari. What a high note to go out on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, wait. What just happened here? Uh, Ari had to dip out because he has to wake okay. up. No, 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 no. My, my screen darkened. That's why I was like, what the? <laughs> yeah, I, was like, yeah. I don't know what's going on. You have yeah. like Slender Man slipping into the background. The way it, my hands were uh, exactly. Yeah, because my, 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 like my, my, my camera yeah. went dark. I'm like, wait, what? So, you know. You haunted, Ranma. You haunted. 
haunted, chaotic something. I, I honestly don't know yeah. anymore. So, and I see it. The beer says, "I wonder if it's more like the BBC than PBS." <laughs> Woo! We'll we'll let you we'll, we'll let you fly with that one. So, this next one, this next story is dedicated to all of us who have who have basically rage quit a game. And in this one, let me close this. A man was arrested for sending 37 death threats to Square Enix because he couldn't win at a game. So, what happened was on from November 2nd to November 19th, the company's online game inquiry form is sort of like that page where you submit your email and just like s stuff like that 37 messages came through says i will seriously kill you cheating developers to clarify the term cheating in japanese is ikisama which refers to the type of person who might cheat at cards or dice with the sleight of hand or like like a card shark or something like that and these threats the, the series of, of threats caused the company to call off a live a scheduled live broadcast that was supposed to be held the following day. The Shinjuku police called in and tracked down the sender by the IP address. Always use VPN, people. On February 22nd, 26, they announced the arrest of 39-year-old Toshiyuki Suga from Matsubushi Town, Saitama Prefecture. He admitted to the threats, telling police, I couldn't win and was feeling frustrated and got emotional. <sighs> I mean, I've thrown my fair share of controllers and I have screamed bloody murder and bloody hell. But I have never, like, jumped online and sent the email, you know. I, I don't even think I have flipped out on developers on Twitter. It's like, wow. And I know it's, that happens. It's just the issue of like self-regulating your emotions mm -hmm. and the fact that like, I think one, a toxic reaction to gaming is kind of what's perpetuated as like cool and edgy, <laughs> you know, and like super cute guy gamers rage quit their games. Oh, that's so interesting. Like it's, it's not guys. It's toxic no, it really and isn't. bad. No. And if you're sending death threats to people over a video game, your prerogatives are all sorts of screwed up, dude. Exactly. And this is what ne general netizens have had to say. I think you're supposed to just write the message, but not click send. I get that. You kind of get it out of your system. If you're getting that mad at entertainment, then you're not using it right. I got stuck in Dragon Quest V a few times as a kid, but it never made me that angry. As a Hoshino Dragon Quest user, this is unforgivable. And this and that was basically they were play, he was playing a mobile Dragon Quest game. And that's pretty embarrassing at 39. I'm sure the game is Hoshino Dragon's Quest. This happened before. There's a lot of guys playing Hoshino Dragon Quest who heads ain't right. Although reports never mention the title, saying the suspect was playing a smartphone game, comments appear convinced that it was related to Hoshino Dragon's Quest, better known as Dragon Quest of the Stars here in, in English. This RPG allows players to travel to different planets and team up with three others online. This rather unlikely this seems rather likely as the council event on November 20th was related to that game. And some comments mentioned that there was an incident back in late 2018 and early 2019 where another person, a 25-year-old guy, sent 30 threatening messages in a similar fashion. Jesus. However, reports didn't mention the smartphone game by name back then, only that the suspect has spent 200,000 yen, which is under two, two grand, trying to get a wanted item. With no results, he then advised Square Enix employees to wash their necks, a threat that means prepare to die, stemming back to samurai days. So it's not confirmed that Hoshino Dragon Quest is the game driving grown men to the brink of madness, but it does seem kind of possible. Wow. I mean, I play I play Overwatch and I think I bought maybe a, I dropped $5 on loot boxes here and there. 
because I want all of May's outfits and stuff, but I'm not going to spend that type of money and then find out that I'm not getting... No. 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 Mm-mm. I swear, you go. Some people. I just, I get it. Like, we're all going through some stuff right now, but, like, don't send your game developers death threats, guys. <sighs> Moving on to death threats to threats of a lost puppy given by frogs. Wow. I'm trying to make a segue, but you know, sometimes they're not as clean as other times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, frogs trick Fukuoka police into a false puppy rescue. Even frogs sometimes have frogs in their throats. And even sometimes mischievous ninjas. Uh, no, I'm kidding. But uh, around midday on the 24th of February, a woman in her 20s was vid visiting the Senju Konando, a temple dedicated to the goddess of mercy that's nestled between the Sai River and Mount and foot of Mount Kubote in Buzen, Fukuoka Prefecture. While enjoying the serenity of the area, she heard the faint sound of a dog barking. This sound led her to a crack in the mountain wall behind the temple's worship hall where the spring water dripped out. She was unable to see anything but could distinctly hear sounds like grr, yip, yip, and woof. <laughs> Fearing that an animal was trapped, she placed a call to Japan's emergency number 110. Two officers rushed to the scene and searched around, but were unable to find any dog. However, all three could distinctly hear a dog barking somewhere very close. Just then, a local in his 50s passed by and told them matter-of-factly that it's probably those barking frogs. You know, something general that you say every day. Uh, and then he left the trio who were feeling stunned and slightly embarrassed. Sure enough, there is such a creature called a Tago frog, also known as Tago's brown frog, after Japanese zoologist Katsuya Tago, who's in, who, which is endemic to Japan and inhabits mountainous areas. By all accounts, they resemble your average frog, measuring 3 to 4 centimeters, or 1.2 to 1.6 inches in length. But when mating season comes between February and April, the males bark and growl just like dogs in order to attract females. That's interesting. It seems most urban dwelling people who read the news, who read the news, also had to check what these frogs sound like and hear it for themselves. Netizens are quoted as saying, I checked a website with Tago frog calls and yeah, they sound like dogs. I saw the story on the TV and the host cracked up when she heard how the frogs sound. Tago frogs usually hide so you can hear them, but not see them. I've never heard them during mating season, though. Ah, the frogs are barking. It must be spring. <laughs> <laughs> That's not something I would ever think of, but okay. Same. Some people on Twitter also shared their run-ins with Tago frogs to give us a very good idea of what the women and officers were experiencing. And if you go to the article that is linked at twitch.tv slash anime jam session in our chat... Um, there are videos of the so-called barking frogs. So if you're out in Japanese mountains and hear the sounds like a dog trapped in the rocks, if it's during Tago frog mating season, it might actually just be the sounds of sweet frog love in bloom. But maybe look into it anyway, because it could very well be a dog trapped in the rocks too. Yeah, Kermit, get yourself some. Get you, get you some Miss Piggy. <laughs> <laughs> And Sandamiri says they need to do a When They Bark series now. <laughs> oh, God. God. That, 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 that's bad. That is so bad. All right. Tago frogs when they... Sandamiri's <laughs> on a roll tonight, I'll tell you yeah, that. Yeah, you are. You're on a roll tonight, man. That's funny. I think it's I, I think it's time to get out of here. <laughs> yeah, and I think we're actually wrapping up on time tonight. So yay, hype and chat. Um, yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you for hanging out with us today, guys. We appreciate it. Um if you like the show, tell a friend. They in turn will tell another friend and so on and so forth. We're independent bloggers, independent podcasters, and we do this for the fun of it. 
So if you have any questions about the show, drop us a line at podcast at animejamsession.com. We're here to believe you. And don't forget to check out our website at animejamsession.com where we have our weekly podcast, um, anime reviews, editorials, cosplayer tips and tricks, cosplayer interviews, links to our YouTube page for convention coverage, and links to our Facebook fan page for cosplay coverage as well. All that and then some at AnimeJamSession.com. And if you like the podcast, leave us a review on whatever podcasting app that you use. We really appreciate that. And you can find us on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, you name it, you'll find it. Over 480-something episodes. Definitely check them out. And don't forget, uh, we are on social media. Follow us on our pages over on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. And check out our, our great content. If you want to see our video convention coverage, check out our YouTube page. Uh, if you want to see some cosplay photos, check out our Facebook page. If you want to know when our articles are going up, when the next episode's available and so forth, follow us on Twitter. Do all three. It's totally free to do. And we appreciate all the cheers in the chat, the bits and everything. Every little bit counts. List it down below our links to our to our tipping jar so you can show a little support through uh, stream elements. Uh, actually, what what do I actually have listed? Down? I, I will take a look. There it is. You've got stream, stream labs, labs coffee, Kofi, yep. and of course bits. Yep, thank you. That's what I thought. I, I figured it was something like that. Anywho... We go around the room real quick for last words. Last words, Ichigo. Well, I am gonna go uh, back to cleaning my studio, and maybe I'll actually go to bed at a reasonable hour. We'll find out on this episode of. Hey yo. Speaking of sleep, I need to readjust my sleep pattern. I'm this 5 a.m. thing ain't, ain't doing it for me, which means I'll be playing more soccer wars and watching more of the anime and doing some more retro gaming. So. And some ice cream. I got another tub of ice cream, so yeah. So, yeah, that is it. End of list. We'll be back with the full cast next week, and we'll hear some great stories and some shenanigans. So I, I think we're golden. Can't think of anything else. What do you think, Ichigo? Good night, Ichigo. <laughs> I think it's time for us to get up and out of here, so I'm Ranma. And I'm Ichigo Gami. Great night. And I'm Ari Rockefeller. <laughs> Great fight, great night. See you next week. See you guys next week. Say goodnight, Ichigo. Good night, Ichigo. That's it. For, for real. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. We're out of here. See ya. This podcast has been a production of Anime Jam Session and AJS Productions. No fanboys and fangirls were hurt, maimed, shot, electrocuted, or pistol whipped in this episode. For now. The views, opinions, and thoughts expressioned on the show do not reflect the staff or the network as a whole. But we're still right, damn it! For transcripts of this episode, start typing. Check us out at AnimeJamSession.com and vognetwork.com for more information about us and other programming. Jamatane!